<clears throat> I just got to say it. I got to say it. Be much in prayer for Brother Kyle Lessing. <laughs> You know how many times I've heard that when I just walked right into a church? <laughs> uh, I heard that when I went down south once. Uh, pastor just got right up. He didn't know who I was. Somebody told him I was a preacher. And uh, he just got right up after he learned my name and said, Be much in prayer <laughs> as Brother Millard comes. Must have been meant to be because uh, a message was given to me. So, <clears throat> all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It came from up above, or I'd have sat down. I've been tested like that before, and I sat down. <clears throat> all right. I want to look at a few. Uh, I know it's a few, let's see, chapter 2 Chronicles, I want to do that first, uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 33, <clears throat> I know tomorrow's Memorial Day. And I want to wish everyone, by the way, a wonderful, blessed, safe, happy, mem upcoming Memorial Day, if the good Lord allows time to tarry. <clears throat> this chapter speaks about a boy that was 12 years old when it began to rain. He was the son of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a uh, good man. <clears throat> he did uh, the work of the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, his son, uh, Hezekiah, came to uh, pass away from the world. <clears throat> and his son, which had the name Manasseh, he uh, uh, took over the kingship. And he started at 12 years old. I'm going to read, uh, begin with verse 1. Uh, 2 Chronicles 3, 3, 33. It says, Manasseh was 12 years old when it began to rain. And he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he, being of course Manasseh, built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. And he reared up altars for Balaam and made groves, that's wooden images, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven, moon, sun, stars, whatnot, <coughs> and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord. Whereof the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. His boy ha uh, had some nerve, let me tell you. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of uh Hinnom, also he observed times and used en enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought or worked much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him or provoke the Lord to anger. And he said, a carved image 
the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do uh, all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke to or spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh with fetters, or yeah, fetters, and carried him to Babylon. <clears throat> and when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God. Now let's talk about the king Manasseh. He besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Well, you think. <laughs> yeah, hey, sometimes that's why I pray the way I do, because sometimes that's exactly what it takes people to go through these things before they realize what they are truly in need of. All right, 13. And prayed unto him, and he, being the Lord, was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God. Now after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate and compassed or surrounded about uh, Ophel and raised, uh, uh, raised it up a, and raised, yeah, raised it up a very great height and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods that he had made, and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sa uh, sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet only uh, unto the Lord their God only, <coughs> which is a good thing. So therefore, we see that everybody is now sacrificing their sacrifices unto the Lord God as it should be, and serving the Lord God as it should be, and worshiping the Lord God as it should be. Now, let me go on. Now, the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was entreated of him 
and all his sin uh, and his trespass and the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images before he was humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house and Amon, his son, reigned in his stead. Amon was two and twenty or twenty-two years old when he began to reign and reign only two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. For Amon sacrificed unto the carved images with Manasseh, which Manasseh, rather, his father had made and served them, and humbled not himself before the Lord as Manasseh his father had humbled himself, but Amon trespassed more and more, and his servants conspired against him, this is why he only served two years, and slew him in his own house. Apparently, the people, uh, his servants, like, you know what, we've had enough of your evil. And so they just went in and uh, killed him in his own house. 25, but the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Amon. And the people of the land made Josiah, his son, king in his stead. Now Josiah, you can go on to read, he was only eight years old when he began to reign. <laughs> and I think Josiah was uh, actually a, a, good, uh, uh, a good king. <clears throat> <clears throat> now like I said, <clears throat> uh, I think I said Hezekiah first, which you can read about in 2 Chronicles verse 32. Uh, yes, and uh, he, it had come to pass that uh, <clears throat> he had passed away. He got, uh, I think he's the one that was sick and prayed until the Lord, and uh, the Lord uh, healed him from that and gave him more years. I believe that's uh, who it was. But anyways, uh, the time to die in this world did eventually come like it does for everybody, except for the ones that's going to be standing when uh, the Lord comes. But they will have to be changed, uh, just like everybody else. Now, all of the goodness has been gone, Ma Manasseh. And yes, there's a, there's a reason uh, for me reading this, although it may seem strange to some of you, uh, why, uh, why I would be reading something like this. It all boils down to a nation which forgets about their God. And we are living in such a nation today and have been for quite some time. It seems everything is going exactly like Manasseh was. They're calling evil good. People are calling good evil. They are worshiping everything except God Almighty, which is indeed the only true God. Uh, Manasseh had to uh, actually be overcome by the enemy, the Assyrians, I believe it was. Yeah. And then uh, I think uh, he was actually had hooks in his nose and feathers on him. Uh, to where he was led. He wasn't going to try to run uh, anywhere with these things in his nose. And he was led into the captivity uh, of Assyria. Now, I don't know, because it does not tell me right here from what I read, how long he had to be in captivity. But eventually, uh, he turned and did the right thing. He turned unto the Lord God, and he humbled himself uh, greatly in the eyes of the Lord his God, 
and he prayed unto the Lord his God. And it wasn't because he prayed. It wasn't simply because he turned unto the Lord, but it was because of why the Lord heard the man's prayer, which had done all this evil. Now look, pay attention to all the evil that he'd done. Made graven images, made wooden images, and then actually put them inside the courts of the Lord's uh, house and then came, brought it uh, literally inside of the Lord's house and set everything up and built altars for all of his false gods, worshiping anything and everything that God had created, but was not worshiping God who had created them. Now, is that going on today? You better believe that's going on today. But it was not because... Uh, 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 simply because he prayed or simply because he turned unto the Lord. Anybody can turn towards the Lord and anybody uh, can pray. And a lot of people do that today uh, and they're still not heard. Their prayers are not heard. Uh, but this is why the Lord God heard the prayers of Man uh, Manasseh. Because he had humbled himself greatly before the mighty hand of the mighty God. And when we humble our, that's why, uh, let's see here. Um, I just set it back down where you got it, buddy. You'll be fine. Let me see if I can find this right real quick, like... <clears throat> 14, yes. Second Chronicles chapter 7. We're very familiar with this, we should be. Verse 14. That's why God says, If my people, which are called by my name, the first thing he says is, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Four things shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God says, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Manasseh did exactly that. He humbled himself greatly in the eyes of his God and he turned unto his God and he prayed unto his God and because his heart was humbled, uh, uh, God heard what the man was praying about. And did God forgive him of his sins like God said he would? Absolutely. In chapter uh, 7, verse 14 of Second Chronicles, did God hear his prayer? Yes. Did God forgive the man? Yes. Did God uh, heal the land? Absolutely. Did God restore the king back into his own country uh, to where uh, he was the king once again? Yes, indeed he did. But look at everything he had to go through. And church, believe it or not, I'm telling you as sure as I'm standing here, if America does not change their ways, if America does not uh, uh, come and he'll uh, humble themselves before God Almighty uh, and pray and turn from their wicked ways and begin to seek the face and the ways of God. That's what he's talking about, the ways of God. If that does not take place uh, when the enemy comes, notice I didn't say if, I said when the enemy comes, uh, Brother America will have no choice uh, but to surrender. They will have no hope uh, but to uh, surrender unto the enemy and 
it will be America's own fault. Uh, let's look at uh, in the book of Daniel uh, where one king, Nebuchadnezzar, I believe it was, uh, this man was haughty uh, just as well. This man was lifted up just as well. He was full of pride just as well. And, but God had to humble this man and did God do it? He absolutely did do it. Uh, brother, this man uh, was cast out of the kingship. Uh, he was cast away from it and was no longer king for a while. Uh, but guess what he was? He became some kind of a beast uh, that would eat of the grass uh, just like the oxen and just like uh, uh, many other things. He grew feathers upon his body and brother, his hands, uh, they had to, they became as claws and he ate of uh, the grass of the field and brother, a uh, uh, dew dripped down upon him. Uh, he had to actually go through this uh, because, and it came from God uh, because God showed the man that I am God Almighty, not you. And beside me, there is none other. Uh, church, how many times can we read again and again and again uh, from Genesis all of the way through the Bible uh, where the children of God who God chose uh, himself. He picked them out of the whole world. He chose them uh, to be his people. He chose them uh, to be a peculiar people uh, in the eyes of the world. Uh, why did he choose them? Because they were smart? Absolutely not. Uh, was it because they had a whole lot? Absolutely not. Uh, was it because there were so many? Absolutely not. Uh, God told him, I have not chosen you uh, because you are many, uh, but I have chosen you uh, because you are few. And why would God do such a thing? Uh, brother, God was go going to go before the whole world, uh, and he did, and make himself a name uh, that brother everyone would come to know, uh, regardless of what they did uh, with the name God. Uh, they would know uh, that he does exist. And just like the Lord Jesus, uh, whether or not uh, we listen unto him, whether or not we obey the gospel, uh, whether or not we are interested in what he did and take it, uh, take heed to it, uh, brother Jesus still has a name that is above every other name. And he has a name uh, that every eye will look upon. He has a name uh, that every man and woman, boy and girl, uh, will uh, uh, bow down to. He has a name that everyone uh, will confess to. And that name, of course, is Jesus Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. In Acts chapter 4, along verse 12, I'm reminded uh, that there's no other name under heaven uh, whereby anybody uh, can be saved. Uh, none other than Jesus Christ. And then... Uh, this speaks of a, a memorial time to me uh, because I know tomorrow and uh, this weekend uh, there's many people that will celebrate their loved ones who gave their life and, right for, and rightly so. Uh, brother, they need to be honored and I have no problem with that. Uh, but so do people in the Word of God uh, that maybe once were evil. Uh, they started out with a bad bad name. Uh, they started out with a bad reputation. Uh, they started out in the wrong path. Uh, but sooner or later, uh, thanks be unto God uh, that God uh, didn't just see that he was killed. Uh, brother, thanks be unto God uh, that he still uh, was long suffering with this king. Uh, thanks God uh, that he had mercy upon this king and he wanted to show this mercy. He wanted 
wanted to show the long suffering of the almighty God he wanted to show uh, the grace of God he wanted to show uh, brother uh, that God is good and very long suffering and is willing to forgive anybody for anything other than blaspheme against uh, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, that's one thing you can't be uh, forgiven for uh, but this man he turned unto God did he not and we don't have to read and remember him anymore about all of the evil that he did and this man was very evil and the man and his son uh, was even more evil to my knowledge and this man only reigned two years and the, his own servants mind you uh, gathered together and they came into the king's house and they killed him right there uh, but see you don't touch uh, the king you don't touch uh, somebody that's anointed uh, for a position of God uh, by the hand of God now I know don't know if God actually anointed this man or not uh, talking about Manasseh's son uh, but nevertheless he was uh, the king and the Bible says honor uh, the king does it not and he says pray uh, for the people that are in charge does not sell you and I uh, to go out and lay hands on them and slay them and so the people uh, uh, got together and took care of the people that went against uh, the very word of God I'm sure and everything ended up working out church uh, because the next person in line for kingship uh, uh, was a good king uh, he repaired everything uh, that his father I believe it was his father uh, the evil one I believe he repaired everything in the Bible I see a lot of that don't you a lot of money being thrown away a lot of hard work uh, being done in vain it seemed of uh, building things up uh, uh, to present unto the Lord their God and it was, had been accepted in the in God's eyes and then only uh, to be destroyed and tore down again uh, when the next king come it repeated itself over and over uh, just like many people do in today's world uh, but church there's a memorial uh, written about you and I and brother when we leave and sister when we leave uh, we're going to leave a memorial uh, behind of some sort what will our memorial say about you and I what will uh, the memorial that you and I leave behind uh, providing God doesn't come back uh, before we pass from this world what memorial will you and I uh, leave behind uh, there's a woman uh, by the name of Mary it was uh, the sister of Martha I believe it's in Mark uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John if I'm not mistaken but I know if it's not in Luke I know it's in Matthew, Mark and uh, uh, John uh, let's see Ma uh, Mark uh, 13 I want to say uh, but it may no it's Mark chapter 14 this was the uh, sister of Lazarus if you don't know this was the sister of Martha in case you don't know her name was Mary and brother she did something uh, that upset many people at the time she did it she went to Jesus while he was sitting at the table uh, brother at meat I believe it was and she broke open this alabaster box uh, which was uh, had a very expensive oil in it. Uh, one I think Matthew might have said uh, that she uh, poured it on his feet uh, where Mark or John, maybe John I believe maybe uh, said that she poured it on his head and anointed. Uh, but at either rate apparently she did both. Uh, she poured it on his head uh, that one man knew about uh, but the other disciples seen that she also poured it in another place on his head. 
Uh, so at any rate, she anointed Jesus with this very expensive oil, uh, which made some people at the table uh, very angry. Uh, why have you wasted the oil, they said. Uh, it could have been sold uh, for much money and distributed among the poor. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, Mark 14, he said... Uh, and Jesus, verse 6, let her alone. Why trouble you her? Uh, she hath wrought or worked a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always, and where, uh, when, and whenever, uh, you will, uh, and whensoever you will, let me get uh, get back here. Four, you have the poor with you always, and whensoever you will may do them good, whenever you uh, feel like it or want to, you can do them good. But me, you have not always. Uh, but Jesus went on to say, she hath done what she could. She is come aforehand or before uh, to anoint my body to the burying and there's a reason for that church because at the uh, at the specific time had she waited there really wouldn't have been enough time uh, to get all of this done but Jesus said uh, verily I say unto you oh, uh, uh, wheresoever this gospel meaning the good news of Jesus Christ uh, shall be preached throughout the whole world this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. What a wonderful, is it not, a memorial to have uh, uh, when you leave this world. And what a beautiful thing uh, for the lips of the Lord Jesus uh, to tell everybody that. Uh, 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 surely that wherever the good news of the gospel is preached throughout the whole world, remember to add her in it. Uh, uh, remember to add what she did in it uh, for a memorial of her. And so church, uh, what is it going to be uh, my memorial when I leave? Uh, will somebody say uh, that man followed the Lord to the best of his capability? Uh, will, will somebody say uh, uh, I didn't like that guy at all and I'll tell you why. I mean, you know, even after we're gone, never think that some people uh, won't make up a big tale that nobody has ever heard. I mean, it happens, church. It really happens. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, the truth of the matter is what uh, uh, will be what the Lord has got uh, 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 for a memorial of you and I. Uh, will we be welcomed in? Will we be able to enter in uh, to the uh, uh, heaven's gates? Uh, just like we're saying, uh, what will we be remembered as? Uh, he never shone of uh, the work of the gospel. Uh, when somebody was in need and called him up, he did what he could to get there. Uh, when I needed a hand, he was always there to attempt to give me a hand. Uh, when I was in need, of just a friend. Uh, Brother Millard, he came and, and uh, he didn't have uh, what I needed at the time. Uh, any words that were truly encouragement, uh, but he was a friend and he listened and he was sitting there with me uh, uh, so I wouldn't have uh, to feel alone. Uh, I hope those are just some of the things that people uh, uh, can remember me by. I hope that I leave uh, such a memorial uh, 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 to the world as this woman here. And if 